Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching from, and thank you for visiting me once again for a 25 to 26 to 27 minute episode of The Draw Along Show, where all ages and all skill levels, skill levels, skill levels, levels, I should have done some vocal warm ups before the show, me, me, ma, mo, mo, where all skill levels are welcome to draw along with me. Now, we start the show with a simple draw along, a step by step drawing that you can do at home using whatever you like to draw with. I often say you could get a crayon, a pencil, you could get a pen or a marker, or if you like, a nice katana sword dipped in some ketchup or mustard, and you can use that to draw all over the front porch. Whatever you like, okay? Uh, Olympics, going strong. I'm watching a lot of it, enjoying it very much. Hope you all are able to get a little bit of access to uh, some programming wherever you live. Um, you know, having it in, to in Tokyo makes it difficult for us to watch it here in the States. The hours are a little weird, so I'm watching a lot of replays. Wish I were watching it live. It's more exciting. You know I'm a tennis fan. You know I like the tennis action. Um, so I've been following that very closely, of course. Uh, pretty much wrapped up at this point. Congratulations to Zver uh, Zverev. Uh, since my wife is German, we're all very excited about that. Good job on that gold medal. Um, but folks, listen, I want to talk to you about something. I want to tell you a little bit of advice, okay? There's a reason you should never fall in love with a tennis player. Do you know why? Because to them, love means nothing. Okay, and now it's time to draw. So get yourselves something to draw with, and we are going to get cooking. If you're ready to go, let's say hi to some folks in the chat while everybody's getting settled. What's up, Sam? Bruce, how you doing? RB, I see you over there too. Fabio, buongiorno. I see uh, Laura. Laura, what's up? Nice to see you as well. Ben is here. Bliss is here. Two Bs. Lots of nice folks joining us. All right, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things. And what are those? Well, as you know, they are a straight line, a zigzag, or a curvilinear line. That could be an S curve. Right, could be a C curve, shallow C curve, all of those lovely things, you get the idea. All right, to get started today, we are going to do a little uh, straight line here. It's gonna be up and down. Here we go, up and down, bloop. All right, now how long is that line, you might ask, if you're drawing this on a piece of paper? Well, I'd say maybe an inch and a half, something along those lines, okay? But you know, you can draw big, you can draw small, you draw however you like, okay? Whatever makes you happy. Um, if you're drawing with that katana sword, probably hard to draw too small, so don't do that. All right, let's look at the length of that line. Now, whatever you did for the length of that, I want you to take a look at it for a second, okay? And I want you to do this. I want you to go and do a little C curve like that, okay? Now, I want you to look at the relationship between these two lines. How long is this? How long is that? If you don't see a relationship that looks similar to what I've got down here, okay, on my page, then adjust it accordingly, all right? If you made that C curve a lot bigger, make this line longer. You want these to be about this size that I'm showing you here. It's important that we have these be about this size. And now that we've done this, we can take this line and we can double it. So we're gonna do another line about the same length, okay? See that? Uno, dos. That's what you wanna do. That's the beginning of our drawing. I'm gonna pause there for a moment. I want you to look at what's on the page. I want you to try and match it. And as I always say, straight lines do not have to be perfectly straight. They could be slightly wobbly like this. That's okay. Don't sweat it, okay? All right, next step. We are gonna connect this point here to this point here. So I'm just gonna slowly do that. Ba -ba 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 Bam. All right. Nice of you to join us. Hello, hope you're doing well. Um, all right, now. This is a very easy step right here. Remember that first line we drew? We're just gonna make it a little longer at the top. Boop, like that. All right. And then from that point where the line originally started, we're gonna draw another line out this way. Okay, just like this. Ba -ba -ba -bum. So we have one and two, get this sort of cone here. And then we have this line. What a mystery, what could it be? What could it be? Any guesses, any guesses? Probably not, too early to tell. Um, ben, you're digging the sound effects. What sound effects? Am I making sound effects? I don't notice, I do it subconsciously, okay. Now, from this point, all right, right here, 
we are going to do a little diagonal line. All right. Now, you might be wondering, Kyle, what is the angle at which I will draw this line? So let's pretend we're looking at a clock. Okay, now if straight up we're noon, and this was 1 p.m. right here, all right? The line I'm gonna draw this away, hmm, I'm gonna say it's about 7.30 to eight o'clock, okay? Like that, so we're gonna go like that. That is the next step. How long is that line? Ah, this is very important. Pay attention to the length of the lines. You always have something to compare it to. If I were to compare this line, say, to the second long line that we drew, I'd probably be able to squeeze about three of them in there. Okay, think about that. Comparative measuring, very important in drawing. It's a skill you're gonna need for a long time. All right, now, speaking of that second long line that we drew, as I look at it, I'm thinking to myself, I might have to make it a hair longer, and so I will, there. All right, uh, now, slightly more than halfway down the length of that line, I'm gonna make myself a little notch right here. Just right there, dang. All right, that's gonna give me a little target in a second. Um, and I'm gonna take this uh, line right here, this point, I'm going to curve it downwards so that it winds up being level with that little notch, just like this. Curve it like that. See how it wound up getting almost underneath that little area right there, slightly wider. Okay, now I can just connect those two like that. All right, we're in good shape. So far, so good, okay? Now from here, I'm gonna angle out this way, okay? Check it out. Angle out this way, there we go. Um, I'm gonna take this and make it even just a, another notch longer. I just, I'm really picky about how long that line is. All right, and now I'm going to do a very shallow C curve. When I say shallow C curve, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna draw this out to the side. You don't have to draw this. Here's a regular C curve. Here's a shallow C curve, okay? So shallow C curve connecting these two, shallow and connect. All righty, all righty. Um, just trying to refresh the old chat here. I think you may remember from last week, that the iPad I'm using to follow the Behance chat is always freezing up on me and I don't know what's up with that. Should I send it back to Apple? Nah. Um, okay, carrying on. We're coming back up to this part of the drawing. We are going to take this line, okay? We're gonna change that angle slightly from here and we're gonna come out that way. Check it out. Zing. Now, is that the same angle? No, no, look, if I were to continue drawing, what would happen? That would go that way. So no, we've changed it slightly, haven't we? Okay. And then from here, okay, I'm going to come upwards with a very shallow C curve. And the length of the line will be roughly the same as this, roughly the same, okay? There's gonna be a little bit of overlap, check it out. I'm gonna come in from the corner and up like so. See that? Not at the, at the tippy tip tip of the line there, we came in a little bit. Then we're going to do another shallow C curve angling out this way and stopping about here. Check it out. Angling out this way and stopping about there. All right, and then we're just gonna connect back this way. So that is what we did, all right? Now here, I'm gonna do a nice little oval. And I want you to imagine, now don't draw this part, but imagine that the oval is kind of long and uh, I could pass a line at the center that way. So check it out, like this. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Maybe now it's all coming into clear focus and we know what I'm drawing, okay? Or not, could still be a surprise for folks out there. Remember this line right here? Let's keep it going, down to there, okay? And let's do one parallel to it right there. So we have one and a two, all right? There we go. Um, then I'm going to come down here inch my way over to the left slightly, and I'm gonna come down like that. Not quite the same angle, is it? Not quite. All right, and then from here, I'm gonna come down this way. Now I wanna wind up slightly, slightly to the left of where this line would go if it just kept on passing down that way. So like this, okay? All right, now let's keep this one going a little longer like that, and we're going to 
connect it down this way. Check it out. We're just going to connect it like that. Okay. This one goes a little longer and we're going to connect it here, believe it or not. Probably surprising to some folks. Not expecting that. Okay, but we're not doing a symmetry thing. Not there because we're doing a three quarter view here for this person. All right, now take this line, make it a little longer and then pop it out this away, okay? And then we're just gonna go whoop, like that. And now, coming out from the back here, zing, zang, there's that other foot. That is creating that sense of perspective, okay? Now we come up this way. Are you ready? This is gonna be a nice curvilinear line. It's gonna be very shallow S-curve, up from here, up and around and over. Okay, you could start up here if you want and come over and then down to here, but you can do this, check it out. Up and over. Look at the size, pay attention to the size, okay? Try and get that about right. That is a nice curvilinear line. It's a little S-curve followed by a C-curve, or kind of like an S-curve without a big bottom part of the S there. All right, now, at about the halfway point between top and bottom, all the way, all right, I want you to do this. Zing, little line. Little line like that, a little dash, a little circle, a little circle off to the sides of that dash, one and two, okay? A little circle right there, it's actually a C curve. And then I'm just gonna go flip, 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 all the way down. Check that out. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. Here comes the letter Y. One, two, three. Okay, see that letter Y right there? And I follow that up with that. Hey, I know what's going on here. We have a tennis player serving. Maybe serving for the match, right? You wanna get fancy? Go ahead and throw some Little lines in there, some crisscrossy lines to suggest the string bed of the racket. Okay, you wanna get even fancier? Put some little creases right there in the tennis skirt. How about that? And there you go. That is the draw along portion of the show for today. Hope you enjoyed that. You can always watch these back, right? And they are available for you on YouTube and Behance. I think we'll do a little art tip next. Why don't we do that? So for today's art tip, pay attention. This is a good one. We just drew a body, and we drew a body doing something specific. Um, here's what I want to talk to you about. This is using your own body to pose and feel through what a pose feels like so when you draw it, it's more accurate, okay? Great example is this person is serving. Now, if you weren't thinking about it or using your own body for reference, okay, and feeling it out and not doing the pose of a person serving, you might make the mistake of having the body and then just taking the arm and throwing it up there and then having the other arm holding the racket, you know, etc. okay? But what really happens is, try this, lift your arm up like you're gonna serve. Well, what happens? Well, the trapezius muscles, okay, back here, trapezius winds up picking itself up, okay, right? And the shoulder, which is connected there, clavicle and also Got your scapula back there, and that whole business is, is popping up, okay? You gotta raise up that whole area and stretch out that lat in the back, curve the, curve the body, kind of curve coming through here, and that trap up. So everything coming from the neck, it's not like this. It's not like the arm just suddenly pops up and other things don't move. Get that shoulder, get that trapezius up, and then you've got the right action, okay? You got somebody bending over to pick something up, what do they do naturally? Well, do it yourself and you'll find that, you know, you're going to do something like this. You're going to rest your hand on a leg, okay, as you bend over, right? And then the other shoulder is going to drop lower as you reach out to grab something. The head's going to dip, okay, so we're not going to see the neck, right? Think about that pose where you're, you're bending down to pick something up what the body does naturally, so that you don't make the mistake of drawing somebody like this, right? Bending over and picking thing up. That's not a natural way to bend over and pick something up, right? So this will help you with your drawings to do more natural poses, 
All right, I want you to give that some thought. That's today's art tip. I think it's going to help you out. Uh, think about it. Use your own body. Do the pose yourself and see what moves and what's connected to what. It's going to help you draw better figures. Okie dokie. All righty. It is time for the old animal and activity game. Now, this is a fun one where, of course, you will suggest for me, and whoop, I'm sorry, there goes the alarm for Appreciation Station. We don't want to forget that. Very important. Today, we're appreciating our good friend Bruce. Now, Bruce, it's a long time ago. We were playing doubles in our match in the semifinals of the French Open, and uh, I broke a string. Now, normally I'm prepared. However, this time I did not bring a backup racket. Foolish me. However, I knew that you had some dental floss in your tennis bag. You went in there, and you were so amazing. Took out that dental floss, yanked out all the strings, restrung my racket with the dental floss. Perfect tension, by the way. And we went on and won that match. Best thing is, I was able to floss in between points, so I had fresh breath when we greeted our opponents at the net. So Bruce, thanks for that. I love that you have great oral hygiene. It really came in handy. Now back to drawing. So for the animal and activity game, you need to suggest, suggest for me, please, in the chat, an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, bizarre, unexpected, and I'll draw it for you in the time that we have remaining, which is only about nine minutes. Um, in fact, it's gonna be about eight minutes by the time we get around to looking at a list. So we're gonna figure this out. It's gonna happen. It always works out. Um, and you always come through for me with funny ideas. Animal doing something unexpected. Examples. Um, we had a pigeon riding a uh, Roomba or a uh, robot vacuum, if you like. Um, we had a uh, hedgehog kayaking. Uh, these were from last week. So it's going to be something new this week. And let's see what we have. We have a kangaroo gardening. I love it. A gardening kangaroo. I haven't drawn a kangaroo in a long time. Thank you for that one, Biola. Nice suggestion. Um, Laura says, a panther drinking tea on the top of a tree. It rhymes. I like it. Um, oh, hey, Bruce. You're thanking me? I'm thanking you because that was a great thing that you had that dental floss there. Uh, Flynn says, a shark flossing. Keeping it on topic. I love it. Thank you, Flynn. Biola says, a beaver skating. Hmm, that'd be kind of cool. How about this one from Ben? A zebra drinking a Slurpee. I haven't had a Slurpee since I was in elementary school, gang. Um, a fish graduating from college, says Mercurial. Wow, that fish was pretty bright. Hardik, um, we need an animal. An animal. Umicorn. Um, you had a, you were going to do a turtle flossing. Oh, wow. All right. So we have some good suggestions. I got to get to it here. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. I've got to think here. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. We did do a shark recently, Flynn. Uh, I like that suggestion though. Um, zebra skating, zebra drinking Slurpee. I'm going to try this zebra drinking a Slurpee because I, I want to challenge myself to draw a zebra. Um, that's just hard for me. So I want to just see if I can do it. All right, so let's grab our light blue color and let's go for it. So Slurpee, it's gonna be giant, big Slurpee, big Slurpee, here we go. And they have those tops, right? Don't they have a top like this, a little cut out, a straw coming out? And let's get that zebra. Enjoying that Slurpee there. And get some nice looking, whoops, get those ears a little closer together. Or do zebras, are zebras ears a little further apart? I guess they're kind of like one and two. One out kind of that way. The other one maybe that way. And then we got to give them that, that hair like that.
gonna anthropomorph anthropomorphize uh, this zebra. Sometimes I do that. Not always, but it depends. I think in this case, it's kind of fun to do so. So that's what I'm gonna do. holding that slurpee like this. There we go. And it'll be all chopped up ice in there, right? Who knows what flavor it is? What was the difference between a slurpee and an icy? Are they, is it just like which convenience store they come from or something like that? I don't know, somebody out there can tell me. Gonna have some stripey action on the zebras. Do zebras have stripes on their heads? I don't even know. I'm gonna guess not. I don't know. Like, if I do that, is that weird on a zebra? Do they have stripes on their faces? This is the challenge always with these drawings, is like not knowing how to draw the thing. All right, here we go. So there is our, there's our zebra. Let's knock that layer back and let's grab our dark blue and see what we can do here. There we go. Okay. those eyebrows up. I think that's fun. Give them those expressive eyebrows, you know? And that's one ear. And then we've got this spiky hair that zebras have. Alrighty, get that t-shirt around this away. Close that off. And get that other sleeve on this side. The other one on the other side there. And then we can just see a little bit of the contents of that Slurpee there. Imagine it has some kind of label, some lettering of some kind. Um, let's get some stripes in there. What do you think about that? I'm trying to imagine what the zebra stripes look like. Aren't they kind of like in nice random sort of flowy little patterns and things like that? Um, what's up, Vanak? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. 
Thank you. I'm glad you like the face. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, pinky out. It's the only way to go, Ben. And there you have it. Well, folks, thank you for watching the Draw Along Show with me. Tomorrow, there is no Draw Along Show, but Friday is a master class, and I'll be back next week for more drawing. So until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other.